from that point yeah, it's a play, <laughs> it's not a film. <laughs> it is well. I keep forgetting. I it keep is forgetting. Well. I think Nimezoya films or Napenda films. Yeah. I don't know. Wacha tunaika tutakuvukisha huko. Hebu nivukisheni. Ju ni me realize that you know this plays are not coming cheaply anymore. You know Kitabu we used to think that plays were 200 shillings, mm -hmm. 300. Mm. Sign on a plane ni 1200 <laughs> regular ticket niko like. Tulifika hapa siku gani? But you're welcome. Thank you. So I don't know where I, I want to start from. Let, let's just start from the <laughs> production manager. Tell us about the play. Okay, hi. My name is Berry Londo. I'm the production manager in sickness and in health. Uh, it's a play that we are planning to do next weekend, 10th and 11th. This play basically speaks about cancer and it is in two folds. The person suffering from cancer and also the side of the caretaker. You see, oftentimes it's more of the person who, who has the illness instead of the person who's actually taking care of this person. And we saw, like, apart from the articles that are talked about on air, and the story is not so much, there's not, like, so much detail and awareness into it. People feel like cancer is a death sentence, but there are people who have actually survived it. And more awareness we create about it, because there are, like, different types of cancer, and their causes are different, but... The more we talk about it, the more we will know when I'm told I have cancer is not a death sentence, but there's something I can actually do about it. So we decided just apart from the articles and the news that are being brought about it, let us put it as a play because people actually resonate with what they see, what is performed at that particular time. And that is why we decided to do it in the month of love. <laughs> <laughs> in the month of love so that we can we can actually have that conversation yes we understand it's valentine's but there's that conversation of there's someone whom i lost maybe at this particular time and then there's someone who got healed at this particular moment and also remember in sickness and in health I are vows <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we took that line from the vows and we wanted to make it as relatable as, as, po as, like as possible because that is why we decided not to call it cancer per se, but in sickness and in health. Because when it, you see, like you have related to it as mm -hmm. he ni vows mahali. So mm -hmm. it's just that in general. Ah, so what, what came you? Because you're the actress, yes. I, I believe the lead actress. No, no, supporting. Support. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, what what came to your mind when you first saw the script? The same thing that came to yours. I was like, hey, is this a love story? What is happening here? So when I went down to read the script and to actually conceptualize all that in my mind, I realized that it's much deeper than just, you know, those vows. And it's actually about staying and sticking with this person mm. in sickness and in health. Number two person of CCA, yo, yo, nini. You know, you've told us what they, what they, what they need to uh, play. Mm -hmm. I need to remind myself that it's a play. Yeah. You've told us what the play is about. Yes. But I feel like, if you tell us <laughs> the synopsis, you know, the story, mm. this is, this, this uh, Romeo meets this <laughs> Juliet, they fall in love, and they are happily ever after in sickness and in health. I, I will try by not letting all the information uh, of course, do. Just, uh, I know, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course, let's move to create a teaser. Yeah, so the story is about um, uh, there are two individuals. There's a lady and a man. A lady lost the mom through cancer. And then the, the guy, the father, has cancer. But the lady is still in denial with the death of the mother and then she meets this guy who the father is going through cancer and then him with just the idea of the father is going through cancer he's like uh let me separate myself from this person so that i cannot actually get it because you see we understand it can either be hereditary or what type of view so he she he distances himself makes a career out of it like become a journalist and now start to get findings on cancer but not reporting from a point of my father's side but it's like maybe a vengeful type of it to try and expose the things that the father never got at that particular time so one time he goes out to just have his fun time and then meets a bitter girl 
who really loves to sing but hapa ndi ataki kutumia sauti but the best friends who who's her mm -hmm. pushes her to do it and this is where she meets the man and the story starts but now the twist in this thing is um uh, the guy gets cancer at the end of it so now what happens since this lady is still in denial oh, with the mother's nini cancer and then this guy is also in some bit of denial yet anajua babake bado ana go through because they had to sell everything and anything that they had so when this guy gets cancer Hey, what happened? My night is shining armor. <laughs> you have cancer. I, mm. I know. So come and see now what happens after that. What I'm going to say ticket is in a talker. You grab your, you grab your ticket. Yeah. But let me, but let me just ask. Um, how did you? How did you? You're a psychologist. Yes, I yes. am. Yes. So I will be coming back to the psychology right. part. Let's pin that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Let's yeah. pin that. But as 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 an actor mm -hmm. to as like as an actress in this in yes. this particular play, how did you feel your role fits into the entire script? Well, uh, she had mentioned that I'm actually a supporting actress, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I help build the character of the main girl who is, you know, going through a lot of pain and she's in a lot of denial about what has happened because of her mom. So I feel my role in this play is to push the story further and further. Of course, there is going to be a lot of love and a lot of loss and a lot of, you know, heartfeltness in mm -hmm. the whole play. So yeah, my role is to, is to push the... the idea that the director had that the script writer had forward so putting that in context of our today to day life mm -hmm. now uh, not just the the play because mm -hmm. the play depicts a menace we are having like mm -hmm. a problem we are having right sure. now in the society mm -hmm. how do you feel how did you feel how real was that role mm -hmm. you know the supporting role of, yes. of, of someone supporting someone who's going through this issue because mm -hmm. there's someone at home maybe and i feel like I, my very close dear person to mm. them is going through cancer. They're not able to, um, they're not able to probably go through the emotions. Mm -hmm. So you having been near someone who was going through that, yes. how real is that compared to now putting in the psychological aspect of it? How is it putting that into a real life setting? All right. So your question is two part. Yeah, yes. I'll go with the first part first. It's very, for me first, I found it very educative because you see art is meant to entertain and also mm -hmm. educate. So I've learned things from this character that I didn't even know people who are going through cancer are going through. So it made me very empathetic about this and I saw that this is actually, some, it's, it's much more difficult than we realize in our minds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of financial burden, there's a lot of things that we're going to be discussing in the play. And as Beryl said, it's all about bringing awareness and causing that awareness to people mm -hmm. so that they understand that this disease, first of all, there's still a lot of stigma around people going through cancer. Mm -hmm. So we need people to understand that it's, it's actually not that bad. It's not a death sentence. And you can empathize with the people that are going through them. So yeah, it's very real and it's very eye-opening to anyone from this side, Sissy Wenye, we will be bringing out that content and for the one that's also observing it. Ah, Barry, yeah. yes. let, me, let me ask you, how do you, as a production manager, <laughs> <laughs> I need to keep reminding myself <laughs> this is a play. I think your part is well. <laughs> it, we are doing well, yeah, right? We are doing we well. Are, we are doing well. Mm. But how do you feel you've been able to, of course, the the uh, play is not yet out, yeah. like it's going to be out over the weekend. But mm. how do you feel knowing or having gone through the production process? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've achieved the targets of creating the play in the first place? I, I feel so because, first of all, we have a very emotional script writer. So the moment we were starting this play, what I think I had read before people read, I didn't feel it. But now during the reading session and the emotions that came out of it, I was touched because it was like really nearly corner goosebumps. And then now looking at the process and the types of conversations we are having, I started looking at um, uh, how it is going to actually affect the actors. And truth be told, the actors know where they are and where they were while we are starting. It's, it's different. 
I, I know they might not see what I'm seeing from this side of me having to run the whole thing, but I have seen changes. I have seen uh, discussions in like different parts of it. And I, I believe we are at the tail end. Uh, we have not sikumaliza sana lazima tuongeze kidogo kidogo, but we will definitely, definitely put up an amazing, amazing show. Amazing. Yeah. What goes through the mind of um, mentally? What mm -hmm. happens to the family of people dealing with cancer? Mm -hmm. One, I think it's shock, mm -hmm. Kwanza, because this is something that's not, it's common, but it's not as common as, as people think. And the thing is, people get diagnosed very late. Mm -hmm. You start experiencing symptoms, you're like, ah. Any homa to any tumbo to in a numa. So people get diagnosed much, much later. Something that would have been diagnosed much earlier yeah. in a quad diagnosed much later because you assume that it's not. So that it, it comes as a shock to most of the family members because, like, higher. You mean all this time this was cancer? So when that happens, even to the person experiencing the cancer themselves, it's very inam sh inam shtua because they imagine that oh my goodness now this is this is the end for me yeah. this is it so it's very it's a turmoil for both the one that is experiencing the cancer and for the family because you imagine cancer treatment is not cheap yeah. the yeah. medicine they have to take is not cheap and it mm -hmm. drains you it drains mm -hmm. you physically it drains you emotionally it drains you financially so there's a lot of these things that we need you know a lot of support from the community at large so yeah it's it's not easy it's it's draining for everyone that is going through it now that's for the people around this person. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. does cancer do mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally mm -hmm. to the patient? To the patient. Mm -hmm. So one, emotionally. Okay, physically we already know that there's mm -hmm. growth uh, happening in your body. There's like, um, what are they called? Tumors that are happening in your body. So there's that you're alre already experiencing physical pain. So when you're experiencing physical pain, that means your heart is also not okay. Your mind is also not okay. So there's, there's a lot of stress. And you also feel as the patient, sister, I'm burdening my people. What mm -hmm. Especially for these families that are not very well to do, yeah? yeah. So they are thinking, pesa ya kuenda chemotherapy ntatawapi, pesa ya kuenda, you know, all those kinds of treatment mm -hmm. that they need to go for. So it's, it's draining for everyone, especially for the patient. So you can imagine... They're thinking, oh my goodness, now I'm, I'm starting to be a burden. Now everyone hates me. And the other thing that happens to them psychologically is they isolate themselves. Because now if they want to feel I am not a burden to anyone, so mm -hmm. what do I do? Let me isolate myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that ends up, you know, that's why you find people, mtu akona cancer, then they akona depression, akona other mental health issues because of this cancer. Feel like you want mm -hmm. to say something? Never feel una 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 get into the nini. It's I, I actually relate with it because it was in one way or the other. Even the actors, you mm -hmm. can find someone has either been so, uh, around someone mm -hmm. who had cancer. Because mm -hmm. I personally had someone mm -hmm. who died through cancer. Ah, sorry. And it took like a different toll on us. And now now looking at her the way she was going through it, because there were like days she'll just tell us. Uh, cause, and I feel now I can't do anything by myself. I can't let you people go. And then it was like during the age of 20, you do not want to yeah. take care of people. So she could feel that she was denying us certain opportunities for us to go out. And for me, I think I, I gathered from that point that the mental part of it maybe might have contributed to how fast she left mm -hmm. at that particular time because it wasn't easy even the drugs that they take at that particular time the type of food they eat and i don't know there was a lady we were speaking to and they said the moment someone starts treating you come on my eye because you're ill it kills you because now they, you start feeling like you have lost the will to live you've 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 already you've aroused a thought in my mind like a question in my mind that I'm like, do I ask you right now? Do I ask you later? But let me, <laughs> let me, because it has come up right now, let me yeah. just ask you right mm -hmm. now. What do you wish, now having gone through the process of taking care of someone yeah. who's, 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 um, who's gone through cancer, mm. what would you wish that cancer patients would know from a perspective, yeah, people around them? You know, there's that part, yenye mimi ni mgonjwa, but yeah. si understand venye pia wewe, exactly. una go, ukona issues. Like, mm. you know, there's that part of me being sick, yes. but there's also that part of me 
understanding that much as ni mimi ndo mgonjwa pia wewe uko nani kuna i think what what i'd say is cuz you know i i might not understand what you're going through but the fact that i am there should maybe be appreciated because i am trying like i am trying in my point i'm trying to do to you what i think at that particular time is right or what i feel is right because human beings we tend to do to people that which we expect so maybe when that is happening if you're not comfortable maybe find a way to gently say it because there's some bitterness that, that also comes from the patient at that time and the more i take in the more i will particularly explode at some point because i'll have to jifungia jifungia so maybe try and communicate more it might be hard i understand because even you don't understand what's happening in your body but let's try and just make the communication more if you don't want me to talk and just hold you let me know i need the holding and not the talking mm -hmm. like if you don't want me to bembeleza you or do this and that maybe steer me to that direction so that i can stop doing that which is bugging you because i do not know i am also a human being trying to just l learn and understand in this situation ah yeah how do we deal with um how will what will you advise mm -hmm. people dealing with cancer that is both patients and caregivers mm -hmm. to deal with the emotional turmoil and mental issues they go through. Mm -hmm. I think what Beryl has said is very eye-opening and I think that's what cancer patients and those that are, you know, the caregivers around the cancer mm -hmm. patients should do. Communication should be very consistent between the two parties because you don't want to feel like sasa mimi nimekubaden as mm -hmm. the patient and you also don't want the person taking care of you feeling like we she we she are you just about to die sasa when i shika you vibaya are you in pain you know so mm -hmm. that they, there needs to be constant and consistent communication with both parties so that you know this is how i'm feeling at this particular time this is what i'm going through and mm -hmm. the other thing is to also go see uh, professionals like mental health professionals psychologists psychiatrists people like those who can help you process this this entire journey because it's not an easy journey it's a journey that causes pain to both the vic the patient and the caregivers the ones giving them you know that support and that care mm -hmm. so there needs to be that consistent and and you know con a constant communication and that emotional um, cushion for both of them so they feel it's a safe space for us to talk about this and that's why we're actually holding the play that it's it's not going to be a difficult conversation to have anymore it is difficult as is so how can we as artists mm -hmm. make it easier for everyone so yeah communicate make sure you're you're dealing with your emotions regularly don't don't stifle your emotions because when you do then that means you're causing baggage now siku moja you'll you'll bust mm. out you'll go like mm. nyata mm. you don't care about me but the thing is the people actually do care about you and as the ones that are giving care to these people you also need to make sure you're very empathetic yeah because if you're unwell for instance mtu akikuja tu anakuangalia kai uta make it even what you know you feel very discouraged yeah, yeah? Yeah, so you need to be strong and and take this person as they are ukimurumia sana pia ataanza kujirumia so just be take them as the way they were have you seen someone who has a cast kwa mguu maybe amevunjika mguu hawatakangi ushinde ukim hai yeye utanguka sasa unamwacha tu akona crutch or whatever like ataendelea kutembea mm -hmm. so treat them try to treat them the way they were before don't let your cancer equate mm -hmm. at the fore of your mind that oh yeah. my gosh sasa huyu ni kuenda I know <laughs> because me, me I think I don't like do I like staying with people who are sick I'm not sure because I'm the wishy type uh-huh sasa wa uko sawa nikupe maji nikupe soda utakula nini I'm those I'm those ones so I'm, I'm, I think I avoid staying with people who are sick mm -hmm. but so it's good to be aware if you're aware yeah. that that's the kind of person you are then you're on the right track to changing that or modifying yes. that behavior so all of you need to be very aware of what this is about yeah. and so you need to be talked mm -hmm. to mjue this is what we are anticipating yeah. their health might actually deteriorate it might get better so all those things all those expectations you need to have them before ndio ujue what to expect you've raised uh, an important um point to note mm -hmm. which i want to um probably ask should we give um counseling 
to both patients and caregivers of cancer? You know, uh, once someone is diagnosed, yeah. uh, do you think it is important mm -hmm. um, to call the entire, like, people who stay with this person, mm -hmm. plus this person, ukai tu chini kama daktari uambie, sasa this person is going through this, mm -hmm. these are the changes you will experience, mm -hmm. this is what happens, and this is when you, like, isn't of it, because I feel like doctors just throw mm -hmm. diagnosis mm -hmm. on your face, and then they leave you to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to you after that diagnosis <laughs> is your problem. Really? Utafika apa kwa mbiye, madam, you have HIV. I know. You know, at least, no. My question is, how important is it that we have counseling sessions between patients, caregivers, and the doctors? That is, even if it's not the doctor themselves, hospitals have a counseling wing. Yeah. It's very important, and I think this we are, we are right at the center of, you know, um, establishing this change. You see how it was Kitambo with HIV? Mm -hmm. you have to go before you're tested what happens you, you go, go for pre-test counseling mm. then post-test counseling yeah so then the same thing should be done for cancer because yeah. it's not something easy people back in the day when people used to be diagnosed with hiv and stuff like that the same we have heard about cancer patients and after the diagnosis has come they're like you know what i will not manage mm. this so yeah it's important for counseling to happen but in the same way that hiv patients are treated disclosure is also dependent on the client the, the uh, person yeah. That, yeah. yeah so they are allowed to disclose at their own time but as the professionals they need to encourage them to disclose Mapema, you know, mapema and your best. Mm -hmm. I disclose yeah. haraka so that they're able to get the support that they need, even from their loved ones. So yeah, counseling is very necessary. They want to address what, to, what they're about to deal with. I think I saw a movie mm -hmm. the other day. I watched Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I still belong to that category. <laughs> <laughs> the We're not judging. <laughs> Please don't judge. Uh, right. They're very nice, by the way. They, they, they help. help. <laughs> Thank you. Someone they at help. least understands <laughs> me now. <laughs> I don't suffer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, I feel like these are conversations that we are bringing, mm. which is a good thing for creatives um, like you, yeah. bringing out some of these pertinent issues. Mm. Because what I'm, I'm just trying to relate what she's saying. Mm. This lady suffered from cancer for a very long time. She had a best friend they spend every day with. Mm -hmm. She has a goddaughter mm. that... They're so tightly knit with. She has a boyfriend. None of these people knows that she has mm. cancer. And she's been living with them. And then now, one day when wanachana na chaliake, I'm a piga manduruku. Like, mm. you know the way she, she, she was just making a lot of noise. And then that's when she has an attack. Mm. And they take her to the hospital. And now the doctor has to tell, her, to tell them that this person, amekwanga na cancer. Na nikuishia na ishia. How important is it that patients disclose? Um, it is important, but I, I think one downside thing we have with the testing of cancer, if I may like go back to Dogo, is uh, many patients wanna particular now ikiwa at a latter point. Because if you look at it, even like in our play we have highlighted mm -hmm. it. Uh, the testing period, the kunazile zenye unapatiwa yenye sio hiyo. So it's, it's, that's actually something that we struggle mm -hmm. with and I hope that with time and how things are evolving, mm -hmm. we will definitely get there. But it is important to disclose in Dio, we try and curb it mapema. Because you see now at the last stage, when it comes, it's not only a shock to the patient, but also to the people around you. And remember when people around you are shocked, the help is actually even mm -hmm. harder. Because now, imagine best friend, the lady you have said, and then there's a daughter, who is another lady? And ladies to Najijua, emotions run wild. Yeah. So like, by the time you're telling me today, I will not seek for a logical solution right now. And we will feel like everyone is an enemy. First, me, me, tutataka tuwalo kwanza kwa hiyo state tulielie kindogo, but time is going. So maybe it's 
let's create an environment where mm. I can easily share and you can easily share. And this is like from small talks over, today I feel like this, tomorrow I feel like this. And you know, again, we have something in our dispos disposal, sorry, that can either lead you astray or help you out, social mm. media. I will look at this and look at, ah, ndio hii hii ndio nini, anitu waje, hizi ndio symptoms, so nineza kuwa na hii, nianza kujitibu na chunye sifai. So, it's important, and another thing, let's get checked. I think, tulijiambia. Your part. I know, tulijiambia, we were seated, and then we were like, was it like five ladies? After discussing the whole script, and we were like, usha iskriniwa, and you're like, where, what? Where? But it it's is like because of the when you HIV. Yeah. Yes. It is because of the stigma that comes with it because utambiwa, even if si uhi o kupimo i utatoka safi, but there's like a comment that will later demoralize you. No na vulu lise makuna tu ilewa denye doki ata kurushi and then ubaki apu na shindo sasa na what next? You do not understand. If I'm not a medical practitioner, I, it, it doesn't help me. I need to actually when you pressure. Sasa nanza ku overthink. It may be something minute, but nanza ku overthink. So let's surround ourselves with people, even if, okay, God forbid, if I am the one in that state, I should surround myself with people who will help me understand, and I should also be willing to listen and understand. Because environment, like our environment, matters. It really, really matters. Let me ask you. As a psychologist, yes. how do we deal with this fear of the unknown? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be screened. Yeah. Because kukona ile mentality na niambia. Kwa nini, unona venye ukienda kupimo HIV, you know you don't have HIV. Yeah. Two, you probably, you, you've probably not been intimate. Mm -hmm. But there's just that, that thing that tells you, me I don't care, let me, ni pime ni kama muna pima watu, you know. Mm -hmm. But now there's that mentality ya, yeah. Mm. HIV. So, kuna ile mentality. So, how do we save ourselves from this mentality? Yeah? What if Naji jinx? Mm -hmm. I am inviting this to myself. All right. I think the only way, f w w the only way I would say would work, the only plausible way I would think of is do it scared, manzi. Do. And cancer seem vituza wale. It can affect anyone. And you see, at this point, we don't exactly know Ninini. Of course, there are a few things here and there. Zanyo Nambua, oh, if you eat processed meat, oh, if you see you do what. But there is no Mara genetics. But there is no particular thing. Yani had to judge exactly what this thing is caused by. So first, you need to get um, over the internal stigma. Because you see, wewe una... Naniki mm -hmm. jipata nayo, like naniki. So I, it's, it's a conversation that you should have with yourself daily. You know what, it's actually not that bad. And the sooner I find out, the better. Because that means I can start treatment early if at all kuna kitu. But siati ni meenda ndiyo ni The way you've said, siati sasa mtu afikiria, oh my goodness, ni meji jinx sasa. Inaenda kuskriniwa ndiyo ipatikane. That doesn't have to be the case, yeah? So you need to consciously tell yourself that ni meenda tu nijue. The same way we do for HIV, ni meenda tu nijue hali yangu to know if, if there's anything that I need to do. So I think there's no shortcut. Ni tu ujiongeleshe day. And also surround yourself with like, like people that think positively about mm. these things. People that are not going to stigmatize you as well. So ukianza this kind of conversation, like, mm. hey, have you, have you gone to be, especially we ladies, there's a certain age, mtu anafika, we need to be go, uh, mm. to, we need to go get screened for breast cancer. So if you're with someone who thinks, mimi hiyo, hiyo mambo siwezi fanya, then that means that we mwenye utanza kuogopa. So be, be the change that you want to see happen. So mm -hmm. if you want something to be done, wewe mwenye jiongeleshe tu, it's not going to be easy, but it's a necessary step for you to take. Amazing. Yeah. So back to the film. <laughs> What was the high? What was the highest point of that film? The play. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing well. I thought I was doing. Um, I am still doing well. The play. I, with with our scriptwriter, mm -hmm. you can never tell the high and the po and the low because mm -hmm. he's eh, he's an emotional like. Physically, it's a guy. Yes. Na kumu emotional. Nezan kena like mbaya ka. <laughs> he's taken. Hayuko soko. Ah, yeah, money. <laughs> like, <laughs> physically, he's not emotional, but how he writes his script. Mm -hmm. He, uyo mse, therapist wakia na kuonga na kazi. So, it, I think, I would say, is how you, 
relate with the script and then that is when you will actually personally pick the highest point or the lowest point. If you're someone who loves to like go down to the sad emotions and you connect with them, that will be your highest. If you love comic relief and you connect with that person, you will actually go with it because it has like balanced emotions here and there. But for me, the highlight would be relating the vows of in sickness and in health with the temporary time that we are living in and then now connecting it to cancer. Because mm -hmm. as we were like even making the poster, we were looking at it like, let's not call it cancer to scare people away. Because you know when you do say cancer, people know that, ha, hapa, tunenda screening, na kila kitu, na ni lessons. Mm -hmm. So we were like, let's make like a poster that will make you relate with the in sickness and in health, particularly cancer, in this day and age and have this mm -hmm. conversation and then even the way the script is scripted is not particularly yes the cancer disease is in the script but also the cancers around us the family that betrays you the friend that takes away the the the, dam the heartbreaks that you have the large life that she's playing playing an interesting role the life that we want to live here and there but again it brings like a mm -hmm. crack in you so relating all these four things at the same time was a highlight for me that's what i i i, I definitely love what was your highlight? She said such <laughs> profound things. I'm looking at the script differently. I'm like, is that the same? Did, this, did, we, did we read the same? Did we read the same thing? I know. <laughs> My highlight is honestly the entire script. I have not interacted with something this heartfelt before, something this in depth. So I'm very excited to be a part of this wonderful project. And it's it's any, you should come see the play. I hope you will be there. One, uh, the depth that, that we are going to go in mm. and the awareness that we hope to bring out to the people. So yeah, my, my high is that this is, this is a topic that ought to have been spoken about Kitambu, but I'm glad we're doing it now. It's mm -hmm. the, right, the right time for it. What do you hope your audience will get from the play? I hope they will understand the caregiver mm -hmm. and understand the patient mm -hmm. and the conversation will just not stop when, when we talk about it now, let it continue because we hope to resonate with people more and more and more. So even after the play, uh, I hope the society will ease in on people. I hope the conversation will be easier. And I hope also we will understand on how to just relate, whether you have it, you don't have it, that's it. That's just the highlight for me. That's, that's what I want people to take home. Uh, dear psychologists, yes. as we are winding up this conversation, mm -hmm. tell, tell a caregiver something, tell a cancer patient something. Someone woke up, they're battling mental health, mm -hmm. they're battling emotional turmoil, mm -hmm. they, they don't see tomorrow, mm -hmm. they don't know, they don't even have the strength to push through today. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me start with the, uh, the patient, yeah? You're not alone. There's people around you that are mm -hmm. oh here yeah. yeah you're not alone there are people that are willing to support you only if you speak out don't isolate yourself thinking oh my goodness this is something that only i am facing no you're not the only one that's going through that and there is always a light at the end of the tunnel just because it's you know they say that it's darkest before the dawn mm. so don't don't think that just because it's very dark right now there's no hope at the end so yeah Hope is hapombele. Do not despair. You're not the only one that's going through this. And find someone that truly cares about you. Open up your heart to them and they will listen to you. They will give you the support that you need. For the caregiver, be very empathetic. Usikwe weishe weishe about the person that is going through what they're going through. So just love them the way they are. Meet them where they're at and find a way to resonate with what they're going through. Just be empathetic to them. Any other thing you'd want us before you tell us where we're getting the tickets? <laughs> I'm a semiote, but um, it's a journey. Life has its ups and downs and how they come. Let's take it with strides. I, I as a caregiver here, I'm here to help you maneuver the process. 
as the patient, I am here to also help people around me understand what's happening. So we are in this together. I might not know what is in store for me, but we are in this together. And let's just communicate and create a better space for all of us. So where can we get the tickets? Uh, tickets are at MOOC.com Africa. Uh, singles now are, are at 1300 Couples at 2400 That's advanced. At the gate... Uh, singles are at 15 and couples are at 2500 There's a combo ticket for like five people or rather six at 11,000. Run, run and get. And also we are having a flash sale this weekend, so look out for that. We are going to have an amazing time. Don't miss. The show is on the 10th and 11th of February at Kenya National Theatre. Each day two shows, one at 3 p.m. and another one at 6 p.m. For any information, there's like a number down there you can call and we will definitely help you out. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for making time. Thank you. Umetuambia venue ya nini ni wapi? Yes. Kenya National Theatre. Okay. Ukumbi mdogo. I think nili, nili. Iyo part ndili ni Peter. But thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for talking to us. You're such a vibe. Sija feel ni kama tuliko tunongelelea cancer. You know, nilikuwa na ngoja sasa with those sad vibes. Zatukai tuanze kusikia. I can wish you, wish you. And I can be wish you. And you know that is how we actually need to make the conversation, yeah. right? I know. That's, that's the same way we need to talk about cancer. Mm. Whether it's with your loved ones, with mm. your family, with your friends. Make it a conversation that's interesting. You don't have to wish you, wish you. Tumambiwa, be self-aware. I think every time we do Strength of a Woman, I love doing take home. My take home today. Mm. Be self-aware. Last week, to listen, ma pima nguvu wano unaweza handle nini. <laughs> so I will still repeat the same thing we said last week, but now bring it to this context. Mm. Measure. Yeah. Did I direct translate? <laughs> Weigh yourself. <laughs> ah, we get to give you good vibes in this conversation. <laughs> Please. So as I finish <laughs> this conversation, I want to tell you something. Weigh what you can take. Weigh what you can take. Be self-aware. Cancer is not is not and i insist is not a death sentence mm -hmm. it's nothing to be ashamed of yeah. it's nothing to shy away from if you have it you will get through it if you don't have it take care of yourself if you have a loved one who's facing or rather going through this challenge soldier on it will be better better days are coming that is the strength of a woman